The Legend of Jimmy Spoon by Christiana Gregory, Chapter 6, Travel. When Jimmy had been with the Shoshone for three days, he realized his family would think he'd run away. He felt anguish knowing that his mother was worrying, and he was mad that he would miss the Fourth of July parade. These feelings confused him. Perhaps riding off with Nampa and, Ga and Gamu had been too much mischief for a boy of his age. He had thought he could return home any time he wanted, but an unpleasant reality sent a chill through him. Jimmy was deep in Indian country. He did not know how to find his way home. After two weeks, Jimmy's legs healed enough for him to ride horseback. Washaki called for the teepees to be taken down at the next sunrise and the horses to be packed for travel. When the herd was brought in from grazing and Jimmy saw Pinto Bean, he hugged her neck as if he'd found a lost friend. She made it easier not to think about his family for now. He liked sitting high on his own horse. His leggings were soft and kept him from being sunburned. His new shirt was loose enough to let air in through the sleeves and neck. A fur robe was rolled behind his saddle, and a new pouch dangled from either side, one filled with dried berries, the other with strips of smoked buffalo meat. Old Mother didn't want Jimmy to feel hunger. Like the others, he carried a personal horn spoon in his belongings. They traveled 15 miles, an easy ride for Jimmy. They camped along a stream they called Coheats. Jimmy was beginning to understand bits of their language, so an old mother told him to wash himself. He hesitated, remembering the pain of the salt bath. She dipped a tin cup in the water and drank to show it was fresh. He untied his moccasins and tossed his pants on the sandy beach. His left, He left his long shirt on. When he waded out, he laughed then dumped himself. The water was cool. It felt wonderful. His shirt clung to his skin. Later it would dry, feeling tight at first, then stretching for a perfect fit. Washaki watched him from shore, smiling. Over the next three days, the band traveled north, stopping in the late afternoon so the women could erect the stick tents and start cooking fires with dried buffalo droppings. By dawn each day, the teepee covers would flutter on the, to the ground. The travois and horses would be packed, and the slow migration would begin again. Jimmy noticed that many rode bareback. On the fourth day, they passed Fort Hall and came to a large, fast river called Paiupa, a river white men had named the Snake in 1812. Several other Shoshone were camped there, ready for a friendly reunion. The women tied bundles of bulrushes together to build rafts wide enough to float robes, cooking gear, sacks of jerky, and small children across the river, the men and boys swam their horses to the other side, drifting into a flat beach. Jimmy, be Jimmy begged to ride Pinto Bean across, but Old Mother refused. During the seven days' journey, it took to get everyone safely across the Paiupa. Jimmy had more fun than he'd ever had in his life. He ate whenever he was hungry, and he got as wet as he wanted without being told he'd catch his death of a cold. Old Mother gave him a fish hook and a line made from a strand of Pinto Bean's tail. Jimmy caught his first fish a large speckled trout as big as his arm. Other boys became friendly, and they played together. Jimmy ran and whooped as loud as he wanted. He was enjoying himself too much to remember Spoon's fancy store or that his parents might be frantic. Old Mother kept close watch on him, worried that Jimmy might kick someone. She wanted no more camp fights over her new son. The more Jimmy played with his children, the more he understood what they were saying to him. Although Shoshone sounded strange in his on his tongue, he was soon repeating short phrases. He felt like a real Indian, if only he could wear a feather in his hair. And that's the end of chapter 6.